Hey, I'm Remy Metaille, I'm a professional mountain biker, and today I'm gonna share with you the 10 steps I use to set up my new bikes. Setting up your new bike is key, and in this video I will go through the 10 steps I consider essential to prepare your new bike, either it's brand new or second hand. For this video, I uh, will be assuming that everything is in working order on your bike and we'll be focusing on trail bikes. The bike I'm going to set up today is the new Cube Stereo 140. It's a 27.5 trail bike, 160 on the front, 140 on the back, and I've never ridden that bike. What tools are you gonna need? Your phone, pressure gauge, Torx, Allen keys, shock pump, and a regular pump. Step one, is everything tight? You want to be checking everything on your bike. From your transmission, to your brakes, your pivot, your pedal, your cranks, your cockpit, pretty much everything that has screws. Step number two, tires. There's so many things to know about tires, so many variables, but the first thing you want to be knowing, do you run soft casing tire or reinforced casing tire? Are you tubeless or do you run a tube? Are you using a tire insert or not? I will make a more focused video on tires and tire pressure. But on my trail bike, on soft casing tire, I run 25 PSI on the back, 23 PSI on the front. If I use reinforced casing tire, I can go down to 22 PSI on the back and 20 PSI on the front, which gives me more performance and more grip. Keep in mind, you should be adjusting your tire pressure depending on different factors. The terrain, your weight, how you ride, your riding abilities, your riding skills, uh, but also on the condition. If it's wet and slippery, you want to lower a little bit your tire pressure. If it's fast and dry, you can usually run a little bit higher pressure just for reliability. Step number three, the seat. Um, I run my seat flat just because I believe that gives me the most comfortable position on flat section and uphill section. You can run your seat a little bit tilted towards the front. That's gonna help you on the steep and technical climb because that brings your weight forward and that helps to keep you in balance. So once you adjust the seat angle, you can move the seat a little bit forward or backwards. So usually, you know, if your bike is slightly too small for you, you might want to move the seat a little bit backwards. If the bike is slightly too big, obviously, you can move it a little bit forward. For the seat size, there is a mathematic way uh, to measure it. I find out that works great for road biking or competitive cross-country uh, racing. Uh, that being said, on the trail bike, I just do it by feel and I find out what's most comfortable for me. I put my riding shoes on, I sit on the bike and put my heel on the, on the pedal. Put my feet towards the bottom and I have my crank in the same angle than the seat tube and I want to have a slight bend behind my knee. So once you set up, uh, you want to clip in on your pedals or put your feet on your flat pedals. And you want to pedal backwards. And you want to find out if your hips are dancing. If your hips are moving, it's because most likely your seat is a little bit too high. So you want to readjust that. Step number four, and probably my favorite, the cockpit. You first want to find out how high you want your stem to be. I like a really high front end, and that's why I'm riding 35mm rise bar. Just because that gives me a little bit more confidence uh, when, it's, when it's really steep. And as well, that removes a lot of weight on my hands and on my shoulder while riding downhill. You then make sure that your stem is perfectly in line with your front tire. Once you've done that, you're gonna play with the angle of your bars. So your bars have been designed a certain way, so that's why they have a back sweep and an upper sweep. Um, so you want to make sure that there is that line, you can see here, that has to match with the axle of your fork. If you set up your bars a little bit towards the back, that makes it a little bit more comfortable in the steep. If you roll your bars a little bit towards the front, that brings a little bit more weight on the front wheel, so a little bit more grip, more traction, and that makes it easier on the climb. Make sure you always tie the cruise at the cross pattern. On this bike, I chose to ride 740mm. Um, on my 29er, on my downhill bike, I usually run 750mm. I found out that the higher I am, the wider I want my bars to be, just so I can get a little bit more leverage. Step number five, the brakes. So I just put my hand on the grip just like, you know, when I go riding and, you know, I ride with my hand just at the edge of the grip and especially those grip have, you know, little support. So once I'm set up, I grab the brake and I make sure that when I pull the brake, when I pull the brake lever, I get close from the next finger, but I don't touch it. 
Once I figured out the distance I want in between the brake and the grip, so in my case 5mm, I make sure I have the same on both sides, um, I want to play with the angle of the brakes. When it comes to brake angle, there is no right and wrong. Some top riders, like Johan Barelli, ride their brake literally like this, or Aaron Green ride as steep as this. I run my brakes quite high, not as high as Johan, but you know, somewhere around here, a little bit higher. The reason why I run you know, quite flat uh, brake lever is just because I feel that my wrist is, is locked. I feel like my hand is you know, safer. I have a better control, especially when it gets steep. I don't have to do nearly as much effort to, to keep my hands on the grips. If you run your brake lever quite steep like this, you, feel, you will feel like you have to hold your bar a little bit tighter to keep your hand on the grips and you're most likely to have your hands falling off the grip especially on like rough and steep stuff. In terms of brake lever, uh, what really matters as well is the reach. So the reach is the distance in between the brake lever and the grip. Um, you want it comfortable because you're going to be using only one finger. Um, when you brake, you don't want your lever to come too close uh, from your knuckle just in case you don't want to be pinching your other finger. I run my front brake and my rear brake a little bit different. I run my rear brake a bit further from the from the grips and my front brake. The reason behind is because on my rear brake, I'm most likely to have to you know lock the brake and pull really hard on it. Rather than the front, I just want a very precise feel, especially like before a corner. So I never lock fully my front brake. Step number six, your shifter and your remote. So you want to be setting up your shifter and your remote after your brakes, just because you know your brake is something you use all the time and it's also you know, safety equipment. For your shifter and your remote, in my personal case, I usually use them when I'm standing up. So in order to set them up, I'm gonna stand up on the bike. So, yeah, I found out that for me, the most comfortable is to run the shifter inside the brakes. So first the grip, then the brake, then the shifter. Same for the remote. Um, grip, brake, and then the remote. I can still access the remote, but that also gives me you know, the best access to the brake lever, which is the you know, most important thing to me. Step number seven, and most likely the most important one, your suspension. So suspension are really complex, and there is a lot to know about it. So we'll make a complete video uh, in the near future. But as of right now, it's your first ride on the bike and you just want to get going. So we're gonna see you know, the basics just to have like a good base and then you're gonna be able to build on and get the bike super dialed in. First thing first, the sag. So the sag basically is the percentage of travel of your suspension you are using when you just stand on it with your own weight. Ideally, you're gonna be using your helmet, put your backpack on, your riding shoes and protection just so your weight is exactly the same than when you go riding. So once the bike is sagged, you're just gonna push those little bends towards the seals. And you want to go down the bike very gently. You then want to measure how much travel you've been using. We're gonna calculate the ratio between the travel that was being used while measuring the sag and the full travel of the bike. So I have 24 mm divided by 160, because it's a 160 fork, times 100, which is 15% sag. So I basically have 15% sag on the front, which is you know, quite accurate. I've been riding that fork on the front bike, so that's what I'm used to ride. For your rear shock, it's slightly more complicated because it's not the full travel of the bike. We're just talking about the travel of the shock. So the stroke on this shock is a 52.5 millimeter, and the travel I used while measuring the sag was 13 millimeters. So I do 13 divided by 52.5 times 100. So I have a 24.7, so basically 25% sag. In order to adjust your sag, if you have air suspension, obviously you'll be using a shock pump. If you have cold suspension, you want to change your spring and either go for heavier or lighter spring rate. On a trail bike, 15 to 20% sag on the front and 25 on the bike is quite standard and that's about what I'm riding, but once again that depends on so many factors and one of the main factors is how progressive are your suspension. So the more progressive your suspension, the more they're gonna ramp up towards the end, so the more sag you can actually have. For my riding style, I like to have a bike that doesn't have too much sag. I don't want the bike to sit a bit too low because that feels a bit like too dead on the travel. So I actually like to have the bike you know, that's gonna 
be standing up a little bit much to be like more reactive and more playful. Once you've set up your sag, you want to be setting up your rebound. So the rebound is how fast the suspension is gonna come back once it's compressed. Rebound is a tough one to adjust. Usually, the more pressure you run in your suspension, the bigger the spring rate is, uh, the more you want to slow down your rebounds. If you run your rebound a little bit too fast, what's gonna happen is that on the trail, the bike is gonna kick you a little bit towards the front and you're gonna feel like the bike is bouncy, feels really alive and like fun to ride, but it's not gonna feel really safe. If you set up your rebound too slow, basically what's gonna happen on the trail is that your bike is not gonna have time to come back to its initial position in between the impact, making the bike less comfortable and the grip harder to find. So it's really important that you know, you find that fine tune in between too fast and too slow so you can get the maximum grip and comfort. Then comes the compression. So there's two kinds of compression, low speed and high speed compression. Your compression is how fast you're gonna be using the travel of the suspension. The low speed compression is characterized by every impact where using the travel slow. For example, when you come into a burn, when you preload the bike to do a bunny up or to do a jump, or when you use a lot of your front brake and your front end dives a little bit. Then your high speed compression. So your high speed compression is whenever the suspension uses the travel really fast. For example, when you go fast through a rock garden or a big up to flats. Because low speed and high speed are really tricky and you need more experience on the bike and more time on the bike for the first ride, I usually just set up everything on the middle and then I go from there. When it comes to settings, uh, I document everything on my phone and that really helps me to get the bike dialed in. Step 8, is my bike quiet? Before the first ride, um, I just like to, you know, like bounce the bike around and make sure there's no rattling noise, no cable smashing, uh, that the chain is not hitting the chain stay or the seat stay and making too much noise, just because that would be annoying on the ride. And, you know, I want the first ride to be a good experience. Most bikes will come already with chain stay protector, seat stay protector, uh, you can also add some 3M tape just to make it even more quiet. At the factory, chains are greased in order to be assembled. But what you want to be doing is you want to put some lube on the chain just because it's going to make your transmission smoother and more efficient. Make sure you always lube your chain far away from your disc. Um, you don't want to spray any oil and contaminate the pads and your new disc. With a clock, you can dry a little bit the chain just to remove the extra chain loops that might attract like some dust and mud. Step number nine, uh, we're almost done, but this one is also quite important. You want to go over everything again, just once more. Um, when you adjust something such as suspension, you might have your bike that sags a little bit more and then your cockpit might feel a little bit too much towards the bike. So you want to readjust everything again, just have a look right around the block and make sure everything feels right. Because biking is a mechanical sport, you should always have tools with you, um, especially on your first ride. You know, everything is new, uh, you might have to tighten something on the trail and you most likely gonna have to adjust something. So, take a shock pump, a pump, a pressure gauge and allen keys. Most likely during or after your first ride, you're gonna need to readjust some stuff, cockpit, suspension, tire pressure or your seat. So your first ride is just to, you know, be comfortable with the bike and you know get to know you on your bike. Well, that's it. Your new bike is ready. So time to go on the trail, have fun, be safe. If you enjoyed that video, like and subscribe. You can let me know in the comments if you think I forgot something, if you do something differently or if you have any question, just let me know and we can talk about it. Thanks for watching. See you on YouTube, see you on the trails.